Good morning. Hi. Welcome to episode 32 of Fiber Town. Today is September 11th, 2013. I'm Emily, Chain of Fools on Ravelry and Fiber Town, other places. Um, I want to say welcome. Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing very well today. Um, this is kind of a special, important day in the United States. Um, and people like to share what they were doing on September 11th, 2001. So I thought I would. Um, so 12 years ago, I was uh, doing an internship at George Washington Hospital in DC. And gotten there at the crack of dawn and uh, was looking at charts and my supervisor said come to the rehab unit look at the look at the TV and watched it unfold and then heard about the Pentagon which is very close to where I was and expected a lot of um, basically a lot of people to come from the Pentagon to GW Hospital. However, all the bridges were closed. Um, so the hospital didn't get anybody from the Pentagon because the city basically shut down. All the bridges from Virginia closed and they went to Virginia hospitals. So my supervisor said, go home, leave. And I grabbed my stuff and started to walk. Um, I didn't want to get on the metro. Uh, I lived in a neighborhood called Adams Morgan at the time, and I called my husband on my cell phone. He had to stay at his school because it was a lockdown situation. So I started to walk home, which is probably about a three three mile walk. And uh, yeah, as I was walking home, I could see across the river. I could see the smoke from the Pentagon, and it was just frightening, terrible anxiety. It was a hard time to live in D.C. It's you know it's a hard time to live in the states in general, but we had all of the the um, poison in the mail scares, you know, at the the Senate and random people getting random poison in their mail. So it was just a terrible time, and it was really hard. Um, and it was at a time when I was just recovering from the death of a friend who had died 10 days earlier, so bam. Anyway, I'm sorry to be such a downer, but I thought I'd just share where I was, what I was doing this day 12 years ago. I hope everyone is well and um, enjoying your, your loved ones and appreciating everything you have, including your crafting. So I have been a crafting fool this week, especially this weekend. I, I actually felt like maybe I was neglecting my family. I just like went crazy, did all the crafts. Um, I want to say welcome to a couple people who introduced themselves, four people. We have Knitting for Sanity, who's Jen from Washington, uh, Spinning Wool Art, Frida from Arkansas, Mass Hag, who is Mikkel from Massachusetts, and Flanuz, who is Sarah, who lives right now in Germany. And she's my buddy, and uh, she's the person I made the second Milo for. So hello and welcome to everybody. Thank you so much for saying hi. Um, yeah, I want to say also thank you for, I got a, a donation this week, and that helps a ton with postage for um, knit-along prizes and also other little podcast-related things and podcast hosting fees, and so thank you very much. It's much appreciated. Um Joanna Spring, I have to say thank you to you, my dear. She gifted two of my herbaceous sock patterns to um, to viewers. So excellent. Thank you so much. Um, she's the best. I haven't seen her new episode this week. I'll have to keep a lookout for that. All right, so Alice is here. She is. She just finished eating an ice cube. It's 90 degrees today. I hope it's the last 90 degree day um, and that fall is truly upon us because I'm going to show you my first show and tell. Okay. Yes. 
I made you all a promise last week. I have followed through. Um, I have finished and cast off and washed and blocked and woven in all the ends of my old town. But first, Alice is coming. Who said hello? Hello, Alice Poo. Say hello. She woke up this morning and the first thing she did when she went outside was to eat a big juicy cicada. Yep, she played with it a little bit and she ate it. She usually leaves the wings behind though. Mm. So how you doing? You've been hunting squirrels today. Say hi. Say hi. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, you go play. All right, so yes, the old town. Here it is, folks. This is the old town by Carol Sunday. It is knit out of Blue Moon BFL Sport on US fives. I used my Chowgu interchangeables. And the colorway is Winter Solstice, which is just this beautiful gray, dove gray. Here it goes, 90 degrees. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. So there's one of the sleeves. These are the really clever contiguous set-in sleeves. Super fun to make. I loved loved making this sweater except for you know from about the gather down when it was a lot of pearl rows back and forth there's my old town it's just lovely it fits great sweaters the i mean the sweater the sleeves are a good length and i'm, I'm very happy with it and it's coming off so that is my fo folks that has been on the needle since March. I had to double check. I was like, really? March? I thought I started that more like May, but no. <laughs> like good six months on the needles. Um, so excellent. So that's an excuse to cast on a million more things, right? Definitely. Um, okay, I do have another show and tell. It is weaving. Um, I did this in a day. Um, probably two hours for each piece. I have a very ugly Berber rug that is sort of in my mudroom area and I shampoo it and it's just like every time I shampoo it it's high traffic. Every time I shampoo it it's like it collects more dirt than before. So not replacing the carpet anytime soon however much I would like to so I decided to weave a doormat. And this is out of Noro Iro. It's a bulky, um, bulky weight Noro, and it's holding up very well so far. Um, this is from a like a sweater I made. It one of the first sweaters I ever made. It was an anthropology capelet. It's a little shrug, and it was full of mistakes. It was crazy colorful, and um, like there was a stitch right back center that was, I don't know what I had done. One of those. One of those mistakes you can only make when you're a beginner and you have no idea what you did. Um, so I, sh I had frogged it and it had been sitting on my shelf for quite a while. And I thought it would be a really cool doormat. The, um, that's the, the, the Noro is for the weft. The warp is a sock yarn that I hand dyed. It was um, just a merino nylon blend, really kind of a scratchy coned yarn I'd gotten from webs just to play around with dyeing and I did not like them as socks at all. So that was the last of it and I actually did, I have a shocked Cricut, it's a 15 inch and this is not really wide enough for a good doormat so I wove a second one and I was like I'll just stitch them up together and have a bigger doormat. However, let me unfold this and show you the other side. It doesn't match. Thank you, Alice. It doesn't match. Um, I was thinking, you know, gauge matters in weaving as well as knitting. And I'm, I'm a very new weaver. But I was, my gauge was much tighter in the second one. 
like I just I beat the weft too tight as opposed to this first one so I was thinking okay they don't exactly match up there's maybe an inch difference in length um, here's what I'll do I'll just you know sometimes in mattress stitch you can sort of fudge um, if things don't match up exactly and it's not too big a difference you can fudge it and make them match up in the end with the magic of mattress stitch nope didn't happen here so I think I'm gonna take it out maybe try again I do have more of the Noro so but I'm out of the I'm out of the work so anyway it was a good exercise I love the colors of Noro in weaving I need to do more Noro weaving It'd be awesome Weaving is fun. Weaving is fast. You ought to try it. Yeah, all the cool kids are doing it. So yeah, that's my second show and tell today. All right, so yes, I have caps on all the things. And let me start with, um, what should I start with? Well, let's, let's start with an old one. The temperature scarf. I am behind on this. I'm still knitting July. But I've woven in ends, so there's the beginning. This is a scarf that my daughter has, my daughter and I have conceived and designed together, mostly her. I'm doing all the knitting, I don't know what that's about. Um, and she is assigned, starting from her birthday to her next birthday, so her 10th year, she has assigned each temperature range a color so we to keep track of the weather we write it down and it's color coded and say if it's 75 degrees I think that's a blue day is that right consult the master list here oh no 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 blue is much colder 75 is yellow so right now we've got tons and tons of orange which is 86 to 95 no is that right 86 to 90, tons of orange, which was hand spun and hand dyed by my friend Sarah Flonews, who just introduced herself. And yes, it is kind of wavy and where well, the yarn is different, but that's okay. It's a fun scarf, and I think that this part will probably go behind the neck. This is the woven in end side. It's the wrong side. All right, so we are into the hottest color. This is a few days in July. We had a very cool summer. I think I might rip this out and hold a double. This is the purple, and this is um, like 94 and above. We only had four days this summer that were 94 and above. It's crazy. Usually we get some super hot weather, but we had a very nice summer in the D.C. area. Very cool, and it was nice. So that's the temperature scarf. I am trying to, here and there, do a few rows and finish July and August so I can do September, October, November, and then I'm done. That is whip one. I have cast on something out of hand spun too. Remember the tour de fleece where I spun basically a pound of alpaca that I had processed, baby alpaca. Well, this is starting to become the pine forest blanket. Um, this is being knit on some chow goos, some fat ones, ten and a half, 40 inch cable, that's the wrong side, and the lace pattern is just starting to appear, and it's fun, but I've already messed up twice, so I'm hoping for the best here, I'm hoping I'll get the groove of the lace, but I've had to, I've forgotten a yarn over, so the stitch count isn't correct on the following rows. <sighs> Um, fortunately, you know right away if things don't match up, and you can just go back a row, maximum two rows. Um, I've learned how to, you know, add a yarn over without actually tinking. I can drop down and add a yarn over. So I hope it's going to, you know, continue to be a good knit, a fun knit. That's really important, isn't it? A fun knit. Super stretchy. Um, so it looks kind of short, like maybe even baby blanket size, but... I think this is going to be at least twin bed size um, just because of the drape of the alpaca. So I am, it's kind of a chunky three ply baby alpaca. I am alternating skeins because they were all spun at different times and here's the two I'm alternating. They're so soft. She's going to be so warm. 
Um, just because of the grist of the yarn has changed, you know, it's different in every ball subtly. And even within the same ball, you know, you've got your thicker and thinner spots. So it's going pretty fast. It's chunky. I've got about 800, 850 yards. So it's going to be an ongoing project. Like I need another one of those. So that's in one of my um, hand sewn bags, my pears. Okay, that is whip number two. What else? Okay, in this bag, my mushrooms, I have my sock design. And I'm just gonna show you guys the back. This is out of Blue Moon Fiber Arts. Socks that rock, lightweight. And I'm knitting these on um, US one and a half, 2.5 millimeters. Uh, these are the Carbons DPNs. I'm on the heel flap. There's the back. This stuff is like, a, it's like iron. It's just so dense and strong and look at that. Some dense knitting, right? And this is the Water Lilies colorway. Love the pooling here. It's very different in the front. So I hope to get that one done soon. And actually my other sock, my herbaceous sock, has kind of suffered because I've been so into this and I haven't done anything all week on the herbaceous. But I'll get there. So I'm not going to show that. But let's see, do I have another? Yes, I have one more whip. I was walking by my stash. And out of the corner of the, my eye, I saw some Malabrigo Chunky in the Coal China colorway, which I think means Chinese cabbage in Spanish, I believe. And I was like, I bet that would make big enough mittens for Heartland Knits in her mitten challenge. And it felt. And I have two. So I cast on the Stockbridge Mitten pattern again, because I am a fool. Chain of fools. <laughs> and this time, I don't, I don't think third time's the charm. I, I cast on on size 15s, because it's chunky and it has to be loose, right? <laughs> it's like, wind chimes when I knit with these things. So size 15 DPNs. I think they're Brittany's. I love Brittany needles. The wooden needles are my favorite wooden needles. Um, yeah, it's, it's a hat for a kid, basically. This is the cuff. Oh, it's a hat for me. No, this is a mitten cuff. I just don't learn. Um, I'm hoping for the best, always. Optimist. Anyway, this I didn't realize until while this was in the hank how much pink is in it, though. I don't know if you can see that. It's greens and maroons, but then you open it up and wind it, and it's all these pinks. I just can't win. I don't know. This represents like five minutes of knitting so fast. And somebody gifted me this yarn. This is, you know, it needs to be gifted to charity again. So I'm just going with it, going with the flow. And that is the end of my whips, folks. Except for another thing I'm swatching. For another design, maybe. Maybe. But that's not, it's not gotten love yet. <sighs> All right, so spinning. Yes, this was also um, one of the fiber arts I hit this weekend. Big time. I took out some of the Finn from Finnegan's Flock, and Finn is the uh, Expand Your Horizons fiber for this month, and I really enjoy spinning Finn. I don't think this was lamb's, lamb's wool, like the last one I got, but I really do enjoy it, and it took me about two, three days, oh, the hair, two, three days to spin 12 ounces of Finn if I do it woolen. Which is also lovely because if you're spinning truly long draw, your other hand is free for a glass of wine. So just came out on the porch every evening, um, poured myself a glass of wine, and spun. 
And I have one, two, three skeins of three ply fin. I'm thinking this is a worsted to Aran weight. Um, I wonder if this could go in Malia, um, the yarn raising podcast. She's having a new to you spin along. Finn is not new to me, but a three ply woolen spun. Did I say woolen before? I hope I did. Three ply woolen spun is definitely new to me. I've never done it before. Seems to me like that would work. So this one is 160 yards, 176 yards, and 94 yards. I still have eight ounces left. So I'm thinking a bulky gray cardigan. This is apparently the year of the gray cardigan. The Ede, the Old Town, now this one. And it, there's an old interweave knits pattern. It's not that old, but a few years old. I think it's called the Rosamund's cardigan. Let me look it up and show you all. I think that might be this. Rosamund's cardigan. Um, what else did I want to say about that? Oh, yes. I found these at Staples. And I just put all the information I could think about about how I spun this because, um, oops, hang on, sorry. <laughs> all the information about the spinning, what whirl I used to sing to the singles, what whirl I used to ply so that I could hopefully reproduce something similar when I get back to the other eight ounces. And I need to do that soon just so it's somewhat consistent. All right, let me see. Rosamund's cardigan. All right. As I am looking, oh, there it is. Now, this was back when it was popular to wear a short sleeve cardigan with a long sleeved fitted shirt underneath. So, I don't know how if I would do that. Here it is. I think that would be really pretty. Um, so I'll have to check that one out. And I haven't really researched other patterns, but that one just came to mind. All right, so I have been plugging away at the gourmet stash. And last week I had spun my basket of gourmet stash. Last week I had spun the Sweet Sister. And this week I have two cups of Sweet Sister. Um, these are all three ply. That's what I'm doing. And I'm on to the last third of Sweet Sister. And this is on my golding. Pretty, pretty golding. One of my favorite spindles. I don't have a ton of spindles, but four, maybe? Mm, okay, so Sweet Sister has got to get finished. However, I decided... And Sweet Sister is Alpaca, Polworth, Silk, Merino, and Angelina. Does have sparkle. And there's the Gourmet Stash card. I decided um, I'm spinning all the colorways, right? As many, probably nine or ten. And I'm going to knit the Albers Cowl by Ann Weaver out of him. Because that's tons of colors and should be super fun. So... I decided to do my chocolate Chianti colorway on my wheel. And that was an education. Chocolate Chianti, Merino, BFL, and Silk. Mostly Merino, touch of BFL and Silk. I just finished plying it. Open it up. I haven't washed it. It's got a, still a bit of a twist in it. My first third of this, look how pretty that is. My first third of this was super overspun. It's much more intuitive for me to spin these poonies on a spindle, and I get a much thinner result. Um, this is so squishy and soft. I really like how it came out, though. I got 65 yards, so it's pretty consistent with the Sakura, where I got 70 yards.
coming together. I just placed a pre-order for four new colorways, um, a yellow, a green, a dark purple, and the Van Gogh one, which I love, which is blues, greens, and yellows. So yeah, I have two finished skeins of Gourmet Stash. This one needs a bath still. Um, this is much heavier than I thought it would be. But yeah, the, so the first third as I was spinning it, I just really couldn't get the hang of it on my wheel. Um, it did get better as I went along, but I don't, it wasn't, it wasn't spinning as thinly as I thought it would, as thinly as it does on my spindles. Um, just very different. So every one of these I want to spin on a different tool. Um, I don't know if I have that many tools, but so it's a, it's a good learning experience and I'm really enjoying it still. And the last colorway I have in my hot little hands is this one. This is Poonies in Space. It's Merino Alpaca Silk. This is a very turquoisey, tealy colorway. Be good for teal timber. And that's going to be spun on my trindle, which is made out of Coca Bolo wood. And it has these fun skulls. There's a skull bead, little green skulls. These can come out and be replaced with like heavier beads if you want to ply. Um, so, very fun. I need to more trindles because you could really just leave the cop on there, take the beads out, and use that as um, a ply, just to ply from, right? So that's going to be fun for those, that turquoise tealy poonies. There's my poonies. Is that it for spinning? Yes, it is. I need to go back and look at how much I have spun this year so far. I've done a lot. Okay, a few, other, a few more things to talk about. Um, acquisitions. Again, with the Malia and the yarn raising, she talked about spinoff on her last podcast, which is a magazine I don't buy regularly. Uh, I have bought it in the past, and sometimes I've just found it very, um, like I kind of glaze over at the technical information. I'm not much of a technical spinner. I don't even know what the exact ratios are on my wheels, on my wheel. However, she really got me interested in this particular issue. And it does have a review of all these wheels so I can see what the ladybug has in terms of spinning ratios. Although I don't, the highest one might be the optional lace flyer. So I think the ladybug has, I think my highest might be 14 to one or a 16 to one ratio. So it has the spinning wheel review. Awesome. If you're in the market, it has sort of anthropological articles. Somebody who's collected um, ancient bead whorls from ancient spindles um, has a great has a great story about a lady who bought a spinning wheel like 30 40 years ago and has traced the provenance of the spinning wheel and who it belonged to and where they lived and their family so I really I've read this cover to cover I really thoroughly enjoyed it so thank you Malia I've also acquired recently some wolf farms goodies this is my favorite of their lip balms. It's creme brulee. It's delicious. I got a couple of those for around the house. And this is my favorite of their lotions, the cherry almond. My kids hate this, this scent, but I adore it. And so does my husband. And their lotions are so like emollient, but they don't stay greasy on your hands. Mm, I love that stuff. Um, and I did get another acquisition, which was made possible by a donation from a wonderful viewer. I have gotten some Fibertown podcast buttons made. Graphic design all done by moi, which means, you know, I used an app on my phone. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's purple, it's got the name, it's got the picture of my hand spun basket, and it's got a heart. Fibertown love. So if you're coming to Shenandoah, and I see you, don't hesitate to ask. I got 50 of these bad boys. Um, that's it for acquisitions, but I do have a couple of miscellaneous things. The FO thread is going strong. I'm enjoying seeing what you guys make. 
and putting things in my queue because you make cool things. Um, I haven't heard from Knits Insanity, who won last week, so hey, if you're watching this week, um, get in touch with me and tell me which pattern you like. Also, the Herbaceous Along, the Hal, is, is awesome. Um, I'm so enjoying watching you guys knit up the socks and um, all the different yarns and colorways, and they look awesome. And I need to get cracking on mine as well. So hop on over there and take a look um, if you want to join in. You've got plenty of time. Um, I think, what did we say? End of October. This is going till the end of October. So it's enough. Enough time to knit a sock or two. Um, what else did I want to talk about? A couple things I've been watching. New podcasts. Um, I started listening to the Naughty Girls, and K-N-O-T-T-Y, and I think they're in California, and they are funny, and I really enjoyed them. And they're doing the Halos of Hope throwdown. Um, so go ahead and listen to them, the Naughty Girls. I tend to keep my audio podcasts on my phone for when I'm out, and my video ones on my iPad. So I listen to them when I'm out and about or walking or exercising. I've also started watching The Suburban Stitcher. I've actually only seen one of her podcasts, which was the last one where her, her son sort of video bombs the episode, which I can relate to. Um, so I really like, you know, I really enjoyed that first show, and I plan to watch the back episodes, and that's Diane. Hi, Diane. Um, what else? The Fiber Factor. Have you heard about this? It is uh, like a reality knitting show. And it's on, as far as I can tell, it's just on YouTube. I could be wrong. It could be other places. But it's it's um, produced by Skissel. And their creative director is Cerelia Rose. And she's the person who designed the Ede sweater. And she's just sort of hipster and gorgeous and seems very nice. And it's a reality show where they have, I think, 12 contestants. And I think six episodes. I think they're on the fourth one right now. They give them yarn and a challenge. I think it's like every month or two months, maybe. And they have to send in video updates of what they're doing. And then there's a judging. They see the final objects. And they have expert, ju expert judges every time in different ones. Like Stephen West has been on there. Some of the magazine editors... Um, who else? It's, it's pretty entertaining. And I've watched as much as I could find on YouTube. I don't think the fourth judging episode is out yet. But it's free entertainment. It's, it's fun. And I find myself, I have found myself saying, I would knit that. And anyway, go check it out. Uh, it's called Fiber Factor. It's on YouTube. And I think the second judging episode the audio was kind of terrible but they may have fixed that so anyway something to check out knitting samurai stuff i just watched your podcast and of course you can put the stitch pattern on mittens i think that's a fantastic idea i would love to see that so um if you don't watch the knitting samurai plus one she is an awesome knitter she's entertaining to watch and um I just recently started watching her, actually, about a month or two ago. So she's another one I would recommend. Okay, so Shenandoah Valley, it's less than three weeks away. And every time I look at the vendor list, my budget explodes even more. I was just texting back and forth with my friend Angie, who gives me so much yarn, about everything we want to look at. Let's see. Gourmet stash. The Fleece Sale, Nitty in Color, Meduseld, Pulling at Strings, I think they have a lot of indie, dot indie yarns, Reflections at Rocklands with the Rambouillet, Shalimar, The Spanish Peacock, Two Rivers Yarn, which is a great yarn shop, The Verdant Griffin, and there's, what else? Oh, Neighborhood Fiber Company is going to be there now. I didn't realize till this morning. And that's what made my budget go boom. There's also a, a potter called Anna Branner's Cloth and Clay, and she's been posting pictures of yarn bowls that are just brilliant on, on the Shenandoah Valley vendor's thread. 
so I'm very excited. Um, my friend Angie says, oh, you, oh Lord, you have it all planned out. I am simply going to throw myself naked on the biggest pile of yarn I can find and scream until the police arrive. I just outed you on air, Angie, sorry. I don't know if you're going to get to watch this. She's super busy. Anyway, she's, I said she's going to be committed, and she said it's okay because they use crochet as therapy. That's it, folks. I think I've showed you everything. Um, it's kind of long today. I hope you're all well, that you take the time today to reflect and um, be thankful and enjoy your life and living it and your crafting. And until next time, I will see you later. Bye-bye.